what you're really saying is that we should not serve liver on Monday. Right. We've got to start the week off with more pizzazz. Yeah. And all it takes is a little rearranging of the menu. Look, we moved the lamb chops from Friday to Monday. Yeah. And then scoot the liver over to Wednesday, which frees the chicken up for Saturday. And let the London broil drop back here into the Friday slot, see? And uh, you worked this all up on your own, did you? Yep. yep. Came to me yesterday when I was rotating my tires. <laughs> of course. Uh, give me a little time, and I'll come up with something that'll start the week off with a bang. You can have all the time you want, but if it's Monday, it's liver. <laughs> Aldo, Aldo, I have an enormous problem. Oh, good. Not good. <laughs> Mrs. Kruger, the chambermaid, called in drunk again. Oh. I'm gonna need you to strip off all the beds. Huh? You know, the beds, sheets, dirty, take off. Oh. Yes, yes, yes. It's not my job. <laughs> you are saying not my job to the woman who took you in, fed you, gave you gainful employment, although I have an enormous problem. Do you understand that? Yes. And? It's not my job. I'll pay you extra. Buy strip, buy strip. <laughs> Mrs. Cunningham, and how was your morning at the beach? Terrible. The hike there and back is enough to kill you. My little Joe could barely make it. I have news for you. He didn't. <laughs> oh, he's coming up the road with my husband. Uh, I went ahead because there's something I want to ask you that's not for Joel's ears. Oh, I understand. We all know how sensitive he is. Uh, Mrs. Cartwright, I know you and Joel have had your difficulties, but today is his seventh birthday, and I want you to help make it special for oh, him. Oh, certainly. Uh, Tell me, do you think he might enjoy running wild through the lobby again so that he could destroy whatever he missed yesterday? <laughs> Um, here comes my husband with Joel. Oh, um, uh, that'll be perfectly fine, Mrs. Cartwright. Mr. Cunningham, many happy oh. returns. Oh. Oh. <laughs> uh, we're going up to change, and while we're gone, I expect you and your staff to arrange a little surprise. Oh, I'm afraid that's out of the question. Why? No, my staff is very busy. You see, at one o'clock, Seymour, the neighborhood cat, is being bar mitzvahed. I don't find that funny. We'll be down in ten minutes for that poor excuse you offer as lunch. Come. <laughs> the nerve of that woman. I happen to agree with her. I can't imagine a more boring and unimaginative menu than yours. Oh, is that so? <laughs> and I would be more than happy to provide my expertise in that pursuit. But won't that interfere with having your nails done and your legs waxed? <laughs> is my bill ready yet? Of course, Mr. Johnson. And I trust you've enjoyed your stay with us? I sure have. This is a swell little place ah. you got here. Everything about it is top-notch. Except, of course, for the dining room. Uh, the menu could use a little upgrading. upgrading. Mr. Johnson, what a coincidence. That's exactly what we're planning to do. In fact, before you leave, I'd like to invite you to be the first to sample our new silver service gourmet luncheon. Hey, sounds terrific, but I gotta be in town by 2.30 at the latest. No problem, you'll be out of here in no time. And because you're so nice, I'm going to throw in a complimentary bottle of champagne. Uh, uh, before you say anything, remember this. It's my day off, I'm going surfing. <laughs> I said sheets, not mattresses. <laughs> the dog, you make a boo-boo. <laughs> Sal, how are you? Fine, considering this is the worst day of my life. Oh? What's the matter? Doris left me. What? Yeah. She ran off. You, with another man? Worse. With my brother, Vinny. Doris <laughs> ran off with Vinny? I should have suspected it two years ago when she started helping him pick out his meat. Uh, that's a dead giveaway every time. Oh, so I, I, I don't know what to say. Just say you have a room for me. I can't spend another night in that house. Of course. Tell me, you want Aldo to go and pick up your things? No, I got everything right here. She took all the luggage. Don't they always? <laughs> you know, Amanda, you've been a real friend for uh, me. I should have married you when I had the chance. Married me when you had the chance? Come on, Sal. We only had one date in high school. Well, what a time we had. I've never forgotten it. It was July 9th, 1952. We went to the old Bijou Theater to see Singing in the Rain. We sat in the 11th row, seats three and four. You had a large popcorn, extra butter. I had goobers and malted milk balls. 
Neither of us had a beverage. Oh. <laughs> no, I, I, I can't believe you remember every detail. Like it was yesterday, Mandy. Mandy. Mandy, you know nobody has called me that in years. Well, they should, and I'll tell you something else. <laughs> You were meant for me. <laughs> I was meant for you. Song from the movie. Nature <laughs> you, and when she was done, you were all the sweet things rolled into one. You're like a play melody. <laughs> Sets me free. Oh, her and the angels must have sent you, and they made you just for me. Sign here. Chief Counsel. They've been looking for you all over town. My bank was just robbed. What? The bank was robbed? Yes. Did anybody get hurt? How do I know? I wasn't about to stay around. As soon as I saw his gun, I threw as much money as I could into this case and fled. Oh, talk about raw courage. I'm a banker, not the captain of a sinking ship. You, Malzone, are a disgrace to your position. The chief of police should be accessible at all times. My wife just left me. That's your problem. You should never let your emotions interfere with your professional obligation. Take a hike, courthouse. I'll see you later, Mandy. Well, Sal, please, be careful. You got it. You know something? You are a very compassionate man. My obligation, Mrs. Cartwright, is to the bank. Hey, I heard a siren. Uh, what happened? The bank was robbed. What? Oh, I can't believe my luck. Oh, don't tell me you had money in the bank. No, I came here to rob it. <laughs> 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 Who's kidding? Pick him up. He's serious. You bet I am. I didn't come all this way for nothing. Come on, get him up. What do you got in there? Pornography? <laughs> That's disgusting. Look, if you were going to rob the bank, why didn't you just go ahead and do it? I mean, you've been here for three days, lying around, mingling with my guests. Well, you see, I've been in the joint for 20 years, so I'm a little rusty, but uh, I figure the way back is... Uh, not to rush. Yeah, but how can you rob us? Two seconds ago, you were raving about the place. Hey, business is business. I love the place. I wouldn't hesitate to recommend it to all my friends, especially now that you're upgrading the menu. We are not upgrading the menu. <laughs> Don't provoke him. The man is obviously a raging lunatic who can go off the deep end at the drop of a hat. No offense. Did Mr. Johnson come in here? Oh, oh my God! What did you say to him? <laughs> I didn't say anything to him, you evolutionary mishap. This is a stick-up. How dare you call me an evolutionary mishap? This is a stick-up. Evolutionary mishap. I have had it. Hey, wait a second. Where do you think you're going? Upstairs to pack. Lady, this is a gun I got here. Don't you raise your voice to me. My father happens to be the third leading manufacturer of folding chairs in America. Hands up! Hands up! Oh! I want you to know that if he is permanently maimed, we are going to sue you for every cent you're worth. Go ahead, I just got out of prison. I ain't worth a nickel. You see the kind of people this place attracts? If we get out of this alive, I'll kill her. Duck! <laughs> If you listened to me, it would have been a liver. Where do you think you're going? Uh, I was just going to check that the coast is clear for your getaway. Get back there. Everybody up against the counter. Now, move. All right. I want you to put all your valuables in this, on the double. You, the cash box. Uh, what about my pornography? You don't want that, do you? No, it's all <laughs> yours, sicko. <laughs> Come on. Get it in there. Move. Come on. Okay. Everybody into the middle room so I can tie you up, quick. Oh, oh, come on. Now, really, Mr. Johnson, there's no need for that. If you just go quietly, I promise no one will ever know you were here, right? Right. 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 What do you take me for? Oh, come on. Now, you can trust us. We're honest people, even sicko. <laughs> Look, I'm tying you up for your own good. Our own good? That's right. If I didn't tie you up and you double-crossed me, I'd go berserk. If a cop even came near me, I'd think you called him. 
then I'd have to come back here to pay you back. And if you weren't here, I'd have to hunt you down like dogs and cut your hearts out. Uh, get some room. <laughs> There's no problem. No problem at all. And while we're waiting, I think we should all remain perfectly calm. No, we won't remain calm. Of course not. Who said that? You did. <laughs> I ain't gonna be calm till I get out of here. The cops could show up at any second. Believe me, you have nothing to worry about. We have a very small police force. They're probably all still down at the bank. They better be. They hate cops. Who can blame you? But believe me, there is nothing to worry about. You are home free. There will be no cops. Attention, this is Police Chief Sal Malzone. We have the place surrounded. Throw out your weapons and come out with your hands up. <laughs> Hurry up, will you? I want everybody tied up before the cops make their move. I'm going as fast as I can. I really think you're being very hasty. Uh, shooting it out with the police isn't something that, that a person should just rush into. <laughs> Lady, I just spent 22 years in the can. I'm not going back. Well, I, for one, find this to be highly offensive. Here I was, gracious enough to offer you free champagne. Oh, Arlene, don't pick a fight with them. Don't tell me what to do. If it weren't for you, I wouldn't be in this mess. You're blaming this on me? That's right. I never wanted to leave Boston in the first place. Attention, this is Police Chief Sal Malzone. You now have three minutes and 45 seconds. You don't scare me, Pepper. Come on, keep on tying there. Tying? You come with me. Where? Where are we going? To see what they're up to. I need a shield in case they got sharpshooters. Oh, there are no sharpshooters. No, we, we, we only have two people on our police force. That's Sal and his nearsighted cousin, Warren. What about Billy? No, uh, he ran off with Doris. What? Well, she'd been picking out his meat for years. <laughs> Who is Doris and Vinny? Sal's wife and brother. That's disgusting. Oh, look who's talking, the guy with the bag of porn. <laughs> his wife ran away with his brother? Dames, you can't trust Oh, them. come on now, just because, just because one dame is a louse doesn't make all dames lice. <laughs> I never met a broad who was straight with me, sister. Oh, they're the scum of the earth. <laughs> come on. Uh, you know something, I'd really rather not. Look, lady, don't make me lose my temper. Because if I lose my temper, then somebody is going to get hurt. Do what he says. You have no right to put your own personal safety ahead of the well-being of the group. On second thought, I think I'll take you, sleazeball. <laughs> you tie her up next. And nobody make any funny moves while my back is turned or sleazeball here is going to get it. <laughs> Untie me, open over there, tackle him. I'll tackle him. You save the whales. <laughs> I'm serious. Come on, Marty. The man is a desperado. He spent 22 years in prison. I wonder what he did. He probably murdered somebody. Or it could have been rape. On the other hand, it might have been arson. But if it was arson, they probably had him in a psycho ward. I hope he's not criminally insane. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Will. That really makes us all feel a lot better. <laughs> Gone? No, no, no. He's up there at the front door trying to figure out what the police are doing. Ah, the police. I call them. You call the police? You idiot. He would have left if it weren't for you. How dare, how dare you? All those saw people in peril. He behaved as any good citizen would. He should be honored and praised. Raise it? I get the raise it? In a pig's eye. <laughs> I think he's starting to come back. Go back in the dining room. I'll get him over here and put his back to the door, and then you let him have it. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, uh, uh, tell me, uh, Mr. Johnson, uh, how was it uh, going out there? How do you think it's going out there? Hey, why isn't she tied up yet? I thought I told you to step on it. How come I got to do everything? <laughs> what happened to him? Uh, it's uh, probably a virus. <laughs> you know, it's going around. <laughs> Who is Joel? The one in the party hat. These are not well people. Boy, you're telling me. What a place. Attention, this is Police Chief Sal Malzone. You have two minutes and 15 seconds. I'm not coming out. I want a car and safe passage to the Mexican border. 
I can't give you that. Well, then these hostages are going to get it. Oh, please, Sal, listen to him. He means it. Get him the car. What? Get him the car. Could you speak up? May I? <laughs> get him the car. <laughs> We are in danger. Don't panic, Mandy. I'll get you out of this. And incidentally, I've been thinking about it since I left, and it's true. After all this time, I still have the hearts for you. <laughs> Sal has the hearts for you? Pots. Pots. You see, years ago, I lent him some pots, and he's been holding on to them for him. But what a time to bring it up. You know, Sal, he gets an idea in his head and just, you know, spits it out. Sal, did like hearts This is me? none of your business, James. <laughs> just expressing an opinion. Well, it's not your concern. This is something that is strictly between Sal and me. And incidentally, there never has been anything between Sal and me. Never. Ever since that night in 1952. <laughs> <laughs> and on the radio, they will play Tony Bennett's first big hit, Because of You. There will you knock it off? off? This is something I don't want to discuss over the bullhorn. Now, come in. No way. <laughs> Shut up. Don't yell at Joel. It's his birthday. Now, Wilma, it's only a match. How dare you say that in front of Joel? Hasn't he been traumatized enough for one day? Will you stop? Joel this, Joel that. You sound like a broken record. Look who's talking. You haven't stopped complaining since we've been here. Busted, busted, busted. Hold <laughs> oh, 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 one more word, it's curtains. No more arguing, okay? Now, it's obvious that lover boy out there doesn't think that I'm serious, so somebody's going to have to go out there and straighten him out. You. Me? <laughs> yeah. You're the only sane person in here. Now, listen. <laughs> the life of everybody in this room is in your hands. Now, I want you to go out there and get me that car. Yes, sir. You want a compact or more of a family size sedan? <laughs> foreign or domestic? I don't care. Automatic or stick Will you get your home? I don't know if he's interested in fuel economy, if he wants something with a lot of pickup, you know? How about uh, four-wheel drive? Shut up! <laughs> Place is a loony pit. <laughs> you people ought to be in the Guinness Book of World Records under the heading of all time bad hostages. <laughs> <laughs> They're dropping like flies. <laughs> what is this? You know something, this is turning into a very explosive situation. We should all relax and remain perfectly calm. Attention, this is Police Chief Sal Malzo. Do you have to say that each and every time? <laughs> How else will you know it's me? Well, who else in town has a bullhorn? <laughs> Good point, but it's academic, I'm coming in. Forget it, Copper. Look, I just want to talk. I'm leaving my gun behind, and I'm going to have my hands in the air. Okay, okay, but no more tricks, because my trigger finger's getting very itchy. Move. Uh, where are we going? We're going out on the porch to make sure he's not being flanked by Warren. <coughs> I don't believe this. Boy, techniques sure have changed since my day. Those ain't gonna help you, copper. <laughs> Sal, can't you keep your mind on business? Give me a chance, Mandy. I'm loyal as a dog, and I can offer you a lifetime of security. What, on a policeman's salary? Not that kind of security. With me, you'll never need a burglar alarm. <laughs> Look, Sal, once and for all, we are just friends. Hey, why don't you give the guy a break? He looks like a decent sort, and he's just had a terrible blow. Thanks. Hey, I've been there. <laughs> 24 years ago, my wife Vera ran away with my best friend Dutch. Vera ran away with Dutch? <laughs> it was the day after I got wounded on our 11th robbery together. Dutch dragged me home and him and Vera dug out the bullet and stayed up half the night sponging me down. I fell asleep that night thinking I must be the luckiest guy in the world to have a wife and a friend like them. When I woke up in the morning, they were gone. No notes, no goodbyes, no nothing. On Christmas Day. Oh. You must have been devastated. Yeah. Well, this explains why you hate James and you spent 22 years in the big house. 
What do you mean? Well, it's obvious. <laughs> but Vera did hurt you so much that you got yourself arrested so you could hide away from the, from the pain of the real world. And every time your parole came up, you probably blew it so that you could stay in the relatively safe emotional confines of prison. That's not what happened. No, what did happen? I killed Dutch. I see. <laughs> he killed Dutch. He killed Dutch. Take it easy. You've got nothing to worry about. I don't? No, you're the first dame who's been nice to me in years. Well, you certainly have a strange way of showing your appreciation. <laughs> right, here. What are you doing? I'm giving up. On what condition? What's that? You give me your phone number so I can call you when I get out. Hold on a minute. She's Will you phone. knock it off now? <laughs> it's Klondike Park. Amanda, don't give him that number. Hey, what's the matter? You afraid of a little competition, four, seven, Phil? Seven, nine. And listen, from you, you call and I... Oh, hey, I was pretty good at my If you call and I'm not there, just leave him. I bet Vera was a dog. I bet Doris was no day at the beach. Oh, yeah? I'm in the book. She was putting up for me. <laughs> For Joe's a jolly good fellow, for Joe's a jolly good fellow. Conrad, I think it's lovely of you to have Joe's party, considering all the terrible things we've been through today. Oh, nonsense. It's the least I can do for Joe. After this traumatic experience, you know, today is the kind of day I wouldn't wish on a dog. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'd like to propose a toast. Oh, good. Here's to good friends. To good, good friends. friends. Oh, uh, sure. Uh, May we always be as close as we are tonight. Yeah. Oh. Uh, isn't it interesting how it takes tragedy to bring people close together? Well, I know Joel has made a lot of friends today. <laughs> Why don't we get together every year at this time One to commemorate the occasion? Huh? Yes, well, that's a good birthday. idea. Yes, and by that time we'll have upgraded the menu. We are not going to upgrade the menu. <laughs> you are so plebeian. If you had a modicum of taste, I would not be the laughing stock of Boston. Here we go again. Boston. 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 You think she was related to Paul Revere. What are you talking, always harping about that miserable excuse of the dog. Joel, Joel, Joel. It's Boston, Boston, Boston. Let me go. Oh, 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 Can't we try to get along together for five minutes? I mean, is there anything except tragedy and crisis that can bring us together? Attention, this is Pete King Sal Next on 7, the two of us, followed by Dick Turpin.